Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, February 18th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storms and its Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, this weekend's diaries about WGET and curl on Windows uh, caused quite a few comments and really some good ones. For example, one thing I forgot to mention yesterday is that as of Windows 10, curl can actually be found as, as a standard component within Windows. Another question that came up is how to deal with WGET and curl with uh, proxies that actually require authentication and it turns out well a curl in particular the curl that comes with Windows 10 can deal with that quite nicely it does support SSPI the security support provider interface that's a Windows API that allows you to tie into the Windows authentication system so even in TLM authentication and such no problem for the version of curl that comes with Windows 10 now, not all versions of WGET and curl support this. So if you download it from a third party, you may have to double check to see if it's available. Also an interesting kind of uh, comment here, I thought uh, to uh, the initial blog post about, well, uh, in the one malware sample that was discussed there, Curl was actually first downloaded via HTTP using one of the standard APIs for HTTP requests. So it's a little bit of catch-22 here. How do you get Curl if you don't really have a HTTP request tool that you like? But like I mentioned yesterday, there are a number of uh, these tools already on Windows and sometimes people just prefer the user interface, the options they have available uh, with uh, the specific uh, Unix tools. Now, of course, we remain interested in various scams around the coronavirus outbreak. Now, at this point, I just see an awful lot of spam. But today, the World Health Organization, WHO, did notice that they're seeing a lot of phishing attempts trying to impersonate them. What typically happens here is where you will receive an email with something like a PDF attachment or at least claims to be a PDF attachment that then links you to a web page that asks you for your email credentials in order to download whatever health advisory WHO is supposed to be sending you. Also, of course, uh, plenty of tricks to try to get uh, money out of you with fake cures. Uh, the most blatant one is probably a fake vaccination that someone was selling, but also sort of minor things like just uh, overpriced uh, surgical masks and the like. So again, if you see any of this, uh, please let us know. The WHO advisory also includes a link that you can use to report any spam import impersonating them. Now I have to say uh, they only appear to be doing SPF uh, for uh, their email. I didn't see a DMARC record. Uh, not sure about DKIM. That's always a little bit harder sort of to detect without having an actual valid email from them. So some of the advice in their advisory, like for example, checking the from email address is probably not all that useful. And Google took a look at its Chrome extensions again and deleted 500 Chrome extensions that essentially did steal data that either injected ads or did other malicious things to your browser. Apparently 1.7 million users had at least one of these extensions installed. These malicious extensions were found thanks to Cisco's dual security CRX Cavator tool that automatically looks at Chrome extensions and conducts a security assessment on them. Now, in general, if you probably have more than let's say 12 extensions installed in in your browser, you're doing something wrong. I find that there are hardly any extensions that do anything real useful. So probably good from time to time to look at your extensions and just delete what you don't use. 
Well, then as a reminder, we are about a week out from the RSA conference. Uh, two events I'll be participating in. First of all, Jason Lamb and I will sort of do a little workshop. Uh, they call it a learning lab, uh, where we'll look at different ways to sort of improve authentication for mobile web applications. So if you're interested in that, then uh, we'll try to keep it pretty hands-on, where you sort of get to play with various uh, techniques there. And then, of course, uh, Alan Poller, Heather McCulloch, uh, Ed Scotus, and myself, uh, we'll be doing our usual top threats uh, panel. And uh, both of these events will actually happen on Thursday, the Learning Lab in the morning and the panel in the late afternoon. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.